Hi guys and welcome to this tutorial on painting Cosmos and I'm using a rather weird reference maybe but I'm going to use this uh, small pouch here for seeds from my plant babies of Cosmos and I'm going to paint this painting here. It's loose, it's intuitive and it's Cosmos so all spring and summer feels in this. Uh, before you join me in the tutorial I want to encourage you to subscribe to my channel where I post a lot more videos on especially loose florals, all florals, florals <laughs> in general. Uh, always watercolor and sometimes other stuff as well, but uh, florals it is. And uh, make sure to subscribe and now we can go and paint some flowers. So I put down my paper here and I'm just going to show you the reference. Uh, this is these beautiful cosmos I just planted have a beautiful yellow center and then these beautiful bright colored uh, petals surrounding it. I'm not gonna copy anything of, from that reference. I'm just gonna use it to look at two different brushes here. A natural hair brush in a size uh, one. That's the uh, Chinese looking one and then a synthetic brush in a size 6. Water, a rag and watercolor paper, uh, paint of course. And the paper is synth uh, a cellulose paper from Canson Montval. It's 300 gram cold press uh, but cellulose so super cheap and uh, good sketching paper. Now I'm just gonna do loose color, uh, loose style um, cosmos today. I love cosmos, um, and painting them in, them in a loose style is just just what they need because we need to just have fun and relax with them. So I'm just gonna paint the petals one by one in water, clean water. Just adding a bit of quinacridone rose here in, towards the center. And a little bit of paint gray, very watered down paint gray at the tip here. And the reason I'm doing that is because we have a. I'm gonna see if I can create a transition between, almost like it's a flower that's white and and pink. But since we can't paint white, I'm gonna add a little bit of paint gray. It looks a little bit too much at the moment, but. Remember that it dries up quite a lot lighter, I think 10% lighter. So this white will dry up quite a bit lighter than it is already. But it is a little bit much at the moment. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. We'll do something to fix it. Just try to relax and have fun with this if you try it out. I'm just putting down some more shapes here. Um, now we have a petal turning towards me or to it towards us so uh, I've just created that in a f more flat shape to show that it was to give an illusion that it was closer to us and you can see that everything is uh, flowing into each other at the moment it's totally fine don't be scared um, this tutorial could be called uh, don't be scared of water uh, because I am use going to use quite a lot of water in here um, but I want you to not be scared of this. Often we are scared of using enough water in our uh, watercolor paintings. I'm gonna put a new gamboge here and just letting it flow into the petals and this will create a beautiful um, glow and you can see it just flowed naturally into the, the rows there. Go. I'm doing the same thing over here, but this will be a side view of a uh, Cosmo. And here you won't be able to see the center, but you will see the the um, petals from the side and a little bit from the bottom. So just putting down the la the rows here and creating some some petals. And I want to make sure I have an uneven number of petals. And that's just me being uh, weird, but I couldn't be able to... I, I didn't want to do four, pe four uh, petals, that would just look weird. So three, five, seven, an uneven number. 
and I'm just gonna put down the green here uh, while it's still wet so it'll bleed into the into the petals up on the flower. This is a sap green. And I'm just gonna put down some I think I'm gonna do a flower more down here. There we go. See how it goes. Um, I haven't planned this uh, out before painting it, so yeah, I have no idea where this will be. Was <laughs> this will end? Oh well, while I was painting this, I had no idea. Right now, I'm just I'm putting the sound on afterwards, so I have an idea of where this will end. But uh, at the moment where I was painting it, I had no idea. So this is just uh, happening as we go. Of course, you can totally sketch it out before and uh, have an idea of the composition, but uh, I like to just go with the flow. Let's just see what what happens. I thought it was a little bit too much with the paints gray up in the first one, so I am going to add a little bit less to the other ones, and I waited a little bit longer for it to dry before adding the paints gray so it wouldn't flow just as much. But I'm going to paint the yellow center here with the new gamboge. Just using the tip of my brush to create dots. So I'm not painting just a big blob of yellow. I'm just doing small dots with the tip of my brush. And now I'm holding my brush super high on the handle. Creating these light strokes with the, the sap green so I can uh, Create some beautiful foliage. And I'm actually going to mix a little bit of the sap green with the quinacridone rose. Um, they're complementaries, and I'm not going to make a super brown, that was actually rather brown, but I want to, to make, neutralize it a little bit uh, and also make it a little bit more harmonious because when we are introducing a completely different color like a sap green to these other ones it can look super not cohesive at all but by mixing it with a little bit of something else it could have been the the paints gray as well you get a lot more cohesion uh, in your drawing or painting but i kind of like to neutralize it a little bit because it is super bright uh, and by neutralizing i make the the quinacridone rose shine a little bit more because it won't be overshined by the green i hope that makes sense i think to me it made sense i hope it makes sense to you as well uh, you can see i'm being super loose with the strokes here just using the tip of my brush filling out a, not all of the space but some I, I really don't like the area up here, so I'm actually going to add even more water to blend it out a little bit and make it into a uh, turn it into a little bit of a background. And make sure you do this while it's still wet. I had a lot of water in my flower. Um, if it starts to dry, you won't be able to do this. And if I had actually planned on this, I would probably have taped this down um, because by adding all this water you will probably get buckles on your page even if it is 300 grams like this but uh, since I didn't make it out up or didn't plan it uh, I uh, just do it like this a little bit of splatters some of them will land in the water and uh, dilute itself but some of them will land on dry page and that is it let's let it make it dry here you go. It's dry and uh, I actually really like how this is looking. I'm just going to take a look at the reference. You can see I need something to make the center stand out, a shadow underneath. So, uh, and also a little bit of shadow between the petals. So let's see if I can uh, do something about that. See, I have a center there. And the colors I've been using up till now is, of course, the paints gray and uh, the rose. So I think I'm going to do something with those two colors. I'm just going to do a few spots in here in the center. 
mostly on the top oh, oh not sorry on the bottom of this center and I'm just gonna see if I can make a shadow here beneath it and I use a paint gray here paint gray is a great color if you want to have something that's not completely black but has a blue tone to it I really like paint gray I use it a lot see that was pretty good and I'm just gonna paint here on the top as well uh, and I'm gonna paint with a the quinacridone rose here but I'm gonna paint outside kind of on the the edge here on the of the center so it'll make the center stand out a little bit more and apologies for the camera being a little bit weird here I uh, hope it'll be better in just a second there you go gonna make it a little bit darker there and make sure when you are painting on your petals always to keep the strokes uh, following your your petal so if some of it dries up for you you will be able to to just make it look like veins um, instead of just blobs of paint want to make it look as natural as possible I'm not completely happy with that flower but I think I'm gonna let it dry and see what is going on and we can uh, just move on to the next next one here I'm just gonna I just put a little bit of shadow on the where the overlapping fl uh, petals are see just a little bit there and just smoothening it out a little bit and the same with this just a little bit of a shadow and just lifting it up a bit because that was a little bit too dark you can always do that with a damp brush just lift it up and uh, especially if it's still wet uh, then it'll good, be good to lift uh, unless you have a super staining color so I'm gonna go to this one as well and remember we are still just uh, strengthening colors and uh, adding shadows but you can also just strengthen colors by adding texture to your petals so especially when we are doing this style we want to be able to do it pretty fairly bright and uh, not add too many layers but make it pop right away so if we can avoid a layer and still keep it bright and uh, sunny and happy then we we are good to go and just adding small dots here to the center as well and a little bit of shadow underneath to make it stand out just add a little bit of texture I'm actually going to zoom in so you can see how I'm adding the lines there um, here you go let's see there you go you can see I'm just starting from the outer edge and going inwards working my way not doing any uh, complete lines but just adding a little bit here and there hints of lines um, more than real lines and just keep them curvy so they follow the the petal and uh, you'll be able to show the shape really nice and don't overdo it you can uh, just put a little bit of water and smoothen out some of the the lines and I'm going to do the same here And you can see, make sure you check out how I'm holding my hands. I keep keep it very controlled, resting on my pinky 
to make sure I have full control over the tip of my brush because I don't want to accidentally uh, drop my brush or uh, just push it down too much. I want to be able to control it pretty much uh, when I'm doing these fine details. I'm actually starting to really like this. Um, I think I need a little bit more detail up here. This is still not looking uh, just the way I want it, but that's okay. I'm just going to add the details to this as well. Some lines. Somehow the lines always... is a <laughs> It's often a lifesaver um, when you start combining the wet on dry lines with the wet on wet um, look beneath uh, in the lower layers because it's kind of in the magic the magic happens somewhere between the two techniques um, so adding these wet on dry lines really helps you enhance the the flower and also just create the texture and uh, and the shape that you want And I'm not actually sure this looks li <laughs> like I would. I'm not sure I would guess that it was a Cosmo, but that's okay. We're not going for uh, copying anything. I'm gonna uh, turn this into a bent leaf here. So just putting down a shadow because that was the, sh the shape kind of indicated that this could be a leaf that was bent. So I'm just gonna put down a little bit of texture here so you can see that. This is actually bending and uh, I think that works really well. That was a that was a good detail. You need to be really um, present when you're painting something like this because you will need to to uh, notice stuff like that that you can make a bent leaf of something when you see it. So I'm really happy about that. That made quite a big a big difference just going to strengthen a little bit of the greens as well but I'm not going to do much more I'm actually super happy about this painting so uh, I'm glad I filmed it and uh, put it on YouTube make sure you subscribe to my channel if you want more videos uh, I'm very much into flowers and uh, you can check them out here also I have a class come up coming up on loose watercolor flowers so you can uh, you can see that as well I'm gonna put a link below and here you can see the final painting, Cosmos in a loose watercolor style. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next video.